Stella had a massive wick, went straight up 80% and dropped back down overnight. Has that got anything to do with Protocol 19 and this 1.19 million transactions per second? Shall we have a look at Protocol 19? Yeah, let's check out this video right here, right now. Okay guys, so Stella just released Protocol 19, completed the upgrade a couple of days ago. Um, and let's take a little dive into what, what that is and what's going on. What does it mean? So today, June 8th, 2022, at 3 UTC, 3 o'clock UTC, the Stellar Public Network successfully upgraded to Protocol 19. Protocol 19 introduces new transaction preconditions and a new type of signer. Technical changes that make it easier to build payment channels, bridges to other blockchains and key solutions on Stellar. And for more, check out the announcement of Protocol 19. So really, it's it's. I'm hearing a lot about this Protocol 19. I'm hearing about Starlight, what it is and, you know, being able to have um, smart contracts on chain. Um, effectively where really we only really have sort of time bounds and multi-sig features um, and this um, you know which is incorporated with this um, cap 21 um, but let's 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 have a look at the announcement let's okay so we knew about protocol 19 but didn't really pay much attention to it so now's the time let's have a look let's see what's going on so Protocol 19, announcing Protocol 19. On June the 8th, 2022, Stella went, Stella, on June the 8th, 2022, Stella Public Network validators will vote on whether to upgrade the network to Protocol 19. To prepare for the upgrade, check out the Protocol 19 upgrade guidelines. Okay, so they've done that. So let's get that. Uh, technical challenges, he's build channels, bridges to other blockchains. So, okay, so if accepted, the protocol 19 will activate some technical changes that make it easier to build channels, payment channels, bridges to other blockchains, and recovery solutions on Stellar. Recovery solutions, what's that? So, let's find out what's new. In protocol 19 protocol 19 implements two core advancement pro pro proposals cap 21 introduces a new suit of transaction preconditions which are optional requirements you can add to control transaction validity 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 time bounds which have long been on stellar transaction preconditions allow you to craft transactions that are only valid in a specific time-based window the new protocol 19 preconditions allows you to craft transactions that skip sequence numbers it's great set ledger time bounds enforce relative time and ledger delays aka relative time locks and require extra signers for example hash locks so CAPS 40 adds a new signer type that allows multiple parties to build a set of transactions for signing that guarantee if any one transaction is signed, authorized and submitted. Information is revealed that allows all other transactions in the set to be authorized as well. So that's definitely helpful for smart contracts. It gives you so much flexibility. But what protocol 19 was designed to do the protocol 19 changes were designed to facilitate the creation of payment channels which are layer two protocols that support high throughput use cases layer two protocols what have we been talking about stellar turrets a type of layer two solution off chain yeah so it's supporting that solution. Payment channels allow two parties who frequently transact with one another to move the bulk of their activities off chain while still recording open balances and final settlement on chain. So smart contract off chain, execution on chain. Generally, payment channels are 
generally payment channels rely on a sub on a structured sequence of transactions two parties open a channel on chain transactions that give both parties control over settlement accounts they then pass transactions back and forth validate them and sign them off chain when one party is ready to settle they declare their intention to close the channel and there's a window of time for the other party to object the way the notified party has recourse if there's a dispute so I say that way notified that way the notified party has recourse if there's a dispute or the declaration of closure is premature malicious or erroneous if all is well the settlement transaction is submitted to the network and the final transfer of funds happens on chain so that's a big thing you know to be able to have that control um in in a, in a frame of time is is yeah where two parties are aware of it at the same time they both agree on that frame of time to make any changes or to dis disagree about a specific let's just say smart contract it gives you that much more flexibility you know that is quite a huge a huge step forward but pushing on so creating an account both parties control has always been easy using Stellar's built-in multi-signature capabilities but Prior to Protocol 19, it was always difficult to handle the rest of the processes. A transaction could only be valid if the source account sequence number was exactly one greater than the sequence number used for the previous transaction, which meant that two party exchanging transactions couldn't increment the sequence number in an off-chain channel. So you could see how that could be a bit annoying. So if something went wrong, then what initially what we would do if something went wrong we would have to bump the sequence number which means you know move the sequence number up on that on that um on that transaction but you also couldn't add a relative time delay to, um, to transactions which meant that there was no way to ensure that there was a window to object to or invalidate a settlement transaction so you know these are these are these are griping problems that have been resolved which is amazing finally combining signatures to authorize a transaction required a multiple part handshake that required extra messaging and slowed things down by adding new preconditions and a new type of signer protocol 19 solves all of these problems you know it's it, from that this prototype to it being actually actually live um it's 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 an amazing it's a really good thing it does help shift things on it gives it gives you much more flexibility and makes things much more efficient i can see that you know um protocol 19 payment channels you can dig into to see how everything fits together but let's have a look at what starlight is so Starlight, prior to implementing Protocol 19, changes in production. Uh, SDF engineers use a sandbox de de um, uh, devnet to build a working payment channel prototype called Starlight. By applying the minimum sequence number preconditions to skip sequence numbers, adding like a sequence bump, adding relevant time and ledger delays to create a relevant time lock and using new signature types to automatically authorize automatically authorize multiple transactions starlight tested out all the pre the protocol 19 changes and the results were pretty amazing in tests using consumer hardware and residential internet connections starlight was able to handle 1.19 million payments per second between two users which is a lot but it's between two users. I want to know if that 1.19 seconds is going to be for multiple users. So if I want to send a payment to millions of people, you know, um, or have a handshake between millions of people, can I get that done within a second? Don't know. 
but it's still a lot and Starlight is well documented. It's an open source um, project and is available for everyone. If you want to roll up in there and have a look, roll your sleeves up and get into it, go for it, take a deep dive. The Starlight blog post, which summarizes how Protocol 19 changes, allows SDF engineers to build the prototype. The Starlight Meridian Tech Talk, which includes a live demo of bi-directional payment channels. The Starlight, the Starlight Mechanism Specification, which provides technical details about how Starlight works, the Starlight GitHub repo, which allows anyone interested to dig into the code and experiment with payment channels. Starlight is still a prototype, effectively, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done um, before it's ready for use in production, which the event of Protocol 19 they're hoping to see some more ecosystem experimentation and engagement and to hear more suggestions about how to improve and make use of Starlight. So if you've got an idea or a use case where you think it's a good idea to send 1.9 million um, transactions per second in a single channel, I mean, that's, that's fine for like bank to bank, maybe, wholesale which makes sense but you know if you're trying to reach out to millions of people um you need to process millions of payments to individuals will that work the same way either way it's this is this is a good move forward so like visa has to do that everyone's making these payments you know let's just talk about a block size can we get you know in one second you know um you know a hundred thousand payments in a second you know per second let's just say can we do can we do something like that so we, you can compete with something like visa or mastercard you know um that's sensible and that's 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 creating a transaction and settling settling that value not just on ledger it's actual real value moving from point a to point b can we do something like that so really that is that's protocol 19 and um yeah i mean you know, there are some other use cases, um, other things you can build with Protocol 19. While Protocol 19 was designed to support Starlight like payment channels, there's not only, th that's not the only thing the new preconditions enable you to build. Kaladin, for instance, is building hub and spoke, hub and, <coughs> excuse me, hub and spoke system that connects blockchains to allow cheap, transparent swapping of assets without reliance on trusted intermediaries. Their solution relies on state channels, which are superset, which are a superset of payment channels, and their stellar integration takes advantage of the Protocol 19 preconditions. To add delay between initiating and finalizing the closing of the channel, and to create hash time lock agreements which their protocol uses to synchronize swaps. The design rationale section of CAP21 also describes several other use cases. So if you're interested in exploring new possibilities and you want to see and you want some inspiration, um, and you want some inspiration complete with technical details, it's a great place to start in an addition in addition to two-way payment channels, um, it outlines how to create one payment channel, hash time lock contracts, new key recovery solutions, parallel transactions, submission mechanism, mechanism for deterministic account sequence numbers at creation. So, yeah, if you're interested, dive into that. I mean, we're, I'm definitely going to be interested in this because I want to see how this is this is this is from what i'm thinking from what i said this is going to be perfect for stellar turrets it's going to enable you know that autonomous um layer two um to to function and to to operate much better so yeah what's this space anyway that is protocol 19 i'm nathan of zion signing out today don't forget to like and subscribe smash the coin and check out the next video see you in the next one